one second. Here we go. All attendees are muted. If you are using the event app, we encourage you to check into the session, update your activities, and be sure to complete the session survey at the end. This session is TLP white and is being recorded. Recordings will be available within 24 hours via the app. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to your session moderator today. It's Sean Richardson. Take it away, Sean. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. I'd like to introduce you to our, our next talk. This is going to be Civic Cert, Joining Forces to Defend Civil Society Worldwide. With us today, we have Hassan Selmi, we have Dimitri, pardon me, Vitaliv, and Nigat Dad. Uh, hopefully, uh, Andre will be joining us shortly. And with that, folks, I will have you go ahead and start. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, on this session about uh, CVCERT today. Uh, my name is Hassan Senmi, uh, and I work for uh, Access Now Digital Security Helpline. We are a digital security facility that uh, uh, provides a free of charge uh, incident response to uh, the civil society. So, uh, civil society members, such as uh, journal journalists and human rights defenders, are very targeted online. Uh, uh, usually uh, under resources to invest in their uh, online uh, defenses, they are always uh, uh, targeted by attacks most of the time due to their uh, work. Uh, the adversaries could go from uh, script kiddies to uh, the most advanced uh, groups. Uh, there is, uh, so there is a need to protect these uh, groups, uh, groups uh, which uh, pushed many organizations uh, non-profits to create uh, and form teams uh, to provide uh, uh, technical support uh, and, uh, and defenses for these uh, uh, at-risk uh, users. However, and due to the lack of uh, uh, capabilities, infrastructures, sometimes uh, funds, uh, information sharing, uh, they were never up to the scale of uh, uh, adversaries, attacks, until they started to uh, unite their efforts. Today, I'm here with uh, some colleagues to tell you about uh, uh, CiviCert, which is one of these uh, coalitions that uh, was formed to defend uh, the civil society. So, uh, what's uh, uh, CiviCert? Uh, CiviCert is not a CERT nor a SOC. It's a, a coalition of organizations that provide incident response and uh, cybersecurity uh, uh, support to the civil society members. Some of its members are part of uh, FIRST, namely my organization, Access Now. Uh, the common interest of this uh, coalition is the, the need to provide cybersecurity support to the most at-risk users around the world. Uh, the reality that each of our organizations lacks something to be fully be prepared to help our beneficiaries, whether it's uh, technical uh, uh, capabilities, language, uh, local physical uh, presence, uh, contacts, pushed us to join forces in order to collaborate and provide the needed support. Uh, how uh, CVCERT got born? So CVCERT came uh, out from uh, a previous effort done uh, uh, by uh, uh, a coalition called the RARNET, which is uh, the first attempt to bring uh, civil society defend, uh, defenders uh, together and that was around uh, 2013. Then around uh, 2016, uh, uh, CVCERT got born in order to attract more local uh, organization uh, and defenders around the world. Uh, joining CVCERT, however, is uh, governed by uh, a strict vetting and uh, referral uh, process in order to make sure uh, uh, who joins us are uh, trusted and within uh, the coalition mandate. Being part of CVCERT provides the members uh, with the multiple form of uh, uh, support uh, provided by the allied organizations, each with their service. Uh, the service could be uh, technical, uh, such as uh, incident response, reverse engineering, uh, threat sharing, uh, forensic, secure hosting, but also uh, uh, support like uh, reference, uh, contacts, funds, uh, moral support and uh, trainings. Uh, now, in order to illustrate the unique experience of uh, being part of uh, our coalition CVCERT, I would like to introduce uh, my uh, co-panelists, 
who will represent some uh, uh, civil cert uh, members. So uh, first, uh, I have with me uh, Aniga Dad, uh, who is uh, the digital uh, and human rights uh, lawyer. Uh, she is the executive director of uh, uh, Digital Rights Foundation, which is a nonprofit uh, that fights uh, to def uh, to defend digital rights of uh, user in her uh, country, Pakistan, and also beyond, with focus on uh, women's rights. Uh, also, we have with us Dimitri uh, Vitaliev, who is uh, the founder and director of uh, Equality, known for uh, tools like uh, DDoS protection, uh, Deflect. Equality is a developer of uh, open uh, systems with uh, uh, focus on privacy, resilience, and self. Uh, determination. Uh, we were expecting also uh, Andre uh, Petrovsky, uh, who is the director of tech at uh, Share Foundation. Uh, also, Share is uh, a nonprofit that uh, uh, is part of a civil service, but uh, unfortunately, he hasn't joined us uh, uh, yet. So I will start with one of the oldest members uh, at the civil service, uh, Equality. Uh, so. Dimitri, Equality was one of the first organizations that started uh, CV Cert. Do you remember a case where uh, a collaboration between the CV Cert members led to great results? Thank you, Hassan. Yes, and uh, good morning, everybody. I'm talking to you today from uh, Montreal, where the winter is coming. I would actually like to talk about uh, two cases uh, where this collaboration has led to some fruitful results. Um, if you permit, I'm going to share a few slides with you and try to go through them uh, relatively quickly. Okay, just confirming, Hassan, can you see the slide? Yes, we see. Okay, great. All right, so yes, since 2010, uh, Equality operates as a not-for-profit uh, with a mandate to develop um, technology and services that help protect and promote human rights on the internet. Um, we have been a member of CiviCert for several years now, before then RARANET, and we have gone through the kind of pains and the tribulations of uh, cooperative work in this rather sensitive and complicated field. So I will be talking about how our collaboration with other civil service members such as Access Now, Amnesty International, Querium Foundation has helped our work and has helped the results uh, of our investigative reporting into attacks against DFLEC clients. As probably quite a lot of you know here, threat information sharing, attribution, Secure infrastructure and incident response, you know, addressing all of these challenges really requires an effective community collaboration, which is one of the reasons for this first conference as well. So the next few slides again will show you how our projects help to mitigate attacks and expose threat actors and their attempts to disrupt the just work of media and uh, civic movements online. Uh, you're seeing both your notes and your slides. Oh, you're seeing both? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. How about now? Still seeing the same note and okay. slide. And now? Uh, still the same slides. Ah. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> it's one of those mornings. No worries. If you want to, real quick, try unsharing and then resharing. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Just okay. one second. Bear with us, folks, just a few little technical difficulties. The 
joys that we're all getting used to with the uh, with virtual conferences. Okay. All right. I will just have to do it uh, like this. This Okay, I go to the safe uh, PDF version. Okay, and share. There we go. My apologies for that. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so um, back to the presentation. Thank you, everybody. Sorry again. So the deflect infrastructure is a caching and attack mitigation uh, service that we provide since 2011 in defense of human rights on the internet. Over 500 websites and over a million daily readers access deflect protected content every day. Many of these clients of our clients come as referrals from CVSERP members, including Access Now, Internews, and others. Deflect offers a free service to nonprofit and civil society groups online. When we do offer this service, we require um, an eligibility check, and it really helps us to be part of the CVSERP network as well when we're doing eligibility checking of new websites to make sure that they conform to the rules of uh, the Deflect service. On average, we mitigate around five to 10 weekly incidents. Um, we've witnessed quite large attacks over the years, uh, some of them comprising tens of thousands of bots and generating traffic up to a terabyte per second. Deflect clients come from all around the world and represent civic society, investigative media, human rights organizations, uh, ecologists, women's rights, so on uh, and so forth. Now, occasionally, we also look into the attacks that have been lodged against our, our, our customers, our clients. Uh, we do this for several reasons. One is obviously to expose the methods being used and possibly shut down some of the malicious infrastructure uh, which was being used in the attack. Another, and I guess a more, much more important outcome, is to help the advocacy efforts of the targeted websites themselves. Not only does the attack not succeed, because deflect might be in front of it and the uh, perpetrator's methods exposed, but the website that they were trying to bring down actually becomes more popular if we're able to publish reporting, especially that which is picked up by the media. And so the aims of the attack is kind of thwarted, turned around 180 degrees, and we actually help the targeted website become more popular by the virtue of attacks launched against them. This is the ideal scenario, of course. It doesn't happen every time, but it does happen. And I'd like to speak about two cases where this scenario did arise. So um, in 2018, okay, sorry. In 2018, uh, we were looking into a DDoS attack against a prominent uh, independent media covering Central Asian current affairs. Uh, we had noticed that attackers were deploying professional vulnerability scanning tools. Looking at the traces left by these tools uh, and into the history of uh, our logs, we traced the same techniques to attacks against other deflect clients also from the same region. We managed to locate and scan the CNC, discovering open SMTP ports and multiple phishing domains resolving to the same origin. Now, this led to two different investigations, one that deflect pursued by itself and one that was later picked up uh, by the Amnesty Tech team. 
we discovered, in addition to DDoS attacks, that multiple members of the Uzbek expatriate uh, human rights community were on the receiving end of uh, a phishing campaign, campaign over two years that was originating from the same service that we used to control the DDoS attack. The second thread of this investigation, the phishing campaign, was picked up, as I mentioned, by members of the Amnesty Technology team, also a CBCERT member, and further exploration, um, discovering and um, looking at the internals of the malware, as well as multiple interviews, led to their publication this March of a report titled Targeted Surveillance Attacks in Uzbekistan, an old threat with new techniques, which is available on the Amnesty website. So this joint reporting, the first and the second, it was made possible by our ability to share sensitive information and contact details and various IOCs between our various organizations, obviously with the consent of participating parties. I think it's important here to point out that each member of the civil service community brings specific and particular expertise to this community. Our ability to collaborate with each other empowers the results of our individual and our um, group work. We are able to bring in specific expertise, specific resources that each individual member being usually a not-for-profit, uh, a small civil society organization does not have access to all at once. And I'd like to go back a little bit further in time and talk about a case uh, that occurred in 2016. We were performing um, several investigations into attacks against the Black Lives Matter website on Deflect. We revealed a four month campaign with over 120 separate incidents in that campaign that was supposedly led by members of the Ghost Squad hackers group. During this investigation and working closely with CVSET member Querying Foundation, who is renowned in our field for doing digital forensics and attack investigations, we were able to pinpoint some of the IPs uh, used by attackers as command and control nodes for the various incidents. This allowed us to attribute events announced on different hacker forums with data coming through our networks. You know, for the first time, we really felt empowered to not only mitigate these attacks, but to actually capture and pursue some of these attackers and attacks post factum. So we turned from, I guess, being a sort of a uh, internet punching bag uh, into uh, a team that can perform detailed investigations, can pursue various IPs and various techniques around the internet with the help of other CVSERT members. My final slide is a proposal about a next type of collaboration that we're pursuing here at Deflect. Threat information sharing um, is a complicated and a, I guess a, a very sort of privacy sensitive topic uh, as well. A deep level of trust and robust policies, as Hassan mentioned, are required for the exchange of what is often personal data in the indicators of compromise and also in a manner that could help prevent incidents elsewhere in the network. At Deflect, we're building a clearinghouse that will enable the exchange of IP behavior at the network edge as vector features. In return, the clearinghouse will reply with an anomaly prediction scoring as generated by Buskerville, which is a Deflect-built machine learning platform for layer seven attack mitigation. So we're proposing that the clearinghouse will allow the exchange of um, um, allow the exchange of uh, non-IOC data 
for the purposes of being able to receive a prediction and generate an appropriate mitigation response on your own networks. You can read more about all of this on the DFLEC website and on the equality website as well. Thank you, Hassan. Thank you, everybody. Sorry for the uh, slide sharing troubles. Yeah, thanks, uh, Dimitri. And that was uh, a really good uh, illustrative examples on how uh, collaboration between uh, the CVCERT uh, coalitions uh, led to really good um, uh, results. Now with NIGAD, uh, through the Digital Rights Foundation Helpline, you are uh, uh, NIGAD helping uh, women, minorities, and dissidents who are facing many kinds of threats. Could you give us uh, a further example of uh, collaboration that exists between uh, uh, the coalition members? Thank you, Hassan. Uh, I'll be very quick since we have Andrej with us and we are running out of time. Um, so we uh, at Digital Rights Foundation in Pakistan, we started a cyber harassment helpline in 2016. And the idea was to uh, not only um, provide digital security support, but also uh, especially young women and girls, uh, feminists, uh, minorities groups who are very hesitant to reach out to the law enforcement or other actors uh, due to the fear of uh, being prosecuted. Um, they they started reaching out to us through the helpline and um, um, not just for the digital security support, but also getting advice on legal help, but also, you know, like investigations around what is happening to their devices or if their devices are acting up. And so uh, in... Um, Two years ago, uh, we got a complaint from um, a woman human rights defender who was uh, basically a peace activist who was campaigning around uh, enforced disappearances in Pakistan. And uh, she, um, uh, uh, she, she, and uh, so the uh, older human rights activists in Pakistan actually really have no idea uh, when they use social media uh, accounts or platforms for their activism about the digital security. But her phone started acting up and she reached out to us and we as a small organization really couldn't, you know, like find that what, what exactly is happening and referred the case uh, to one of the organization and due to the security reasons, I cannot name the organization, but um, we referred the case to the civic cert member and they, initially they started looking into her devices, but later that uh, uh, investigation led to a larger investigation in a very detailed manner and resulted in a research study and found out that not just one activist is facing this kind of uh, targeted malware attack, but a very sophisticated targeted malware attack is happening against several uh, human rights defenders and women human rights defenders in Pakistan. So uh, that investigation led to, you know, uh, awareness raising among human rights groups, not just working on digital rights, but also traditional human rights groups and older ones. Uh, and, the way, and the second case is a very generic case where, you know, they're like uh, sophisticated complaints that we uh, receive. Uh, and um, we as also local organization do not have that advanced tech knowledge due to the lack of resources. Uh, we refer those cases to the Access Now helpline. And it's a very uh, mutual uh, sort of relationship because we as a Digital Rights Foundation, uh, a feminist-led organization always have a gender aspect towards digital security or digital rights. Um, and um, um, so Access Now also reaches out to us in terms of what are the things that they can do as a helpline uh, in terms of, you know, uh, addressing the issues of women human rights defenders or feminist, uh, uh, feminist-led organizations or ju just feminists. So this is, that's how I feel that, you know, the referral mechanism within Civic Cert has been helping small organizations uh, in terms of uh, uh, conducting uh, uh, investigations and researches and helping human rights defenders on the ground, at the same time increasing our, all, our knowledge as well, which we usually cannot really get due to the lack of resources and lack of funding as well. So I'll end here and hand it over to Hassan. Thanks, Nikat. We are uh, a little bit late uh, in our schedule, uh, but uh, Andre from uh, uh, share cert uh, joined us. Uh, Andre, if you hear us very quickly, uh, could you tell us what's the motive of uh, uh, share cert, which is uh, a, a new uh, member of civic cert, uh, that pushed you to join uh, this coalition? 
yeah uh, thank you thank you Hassan for the introduction and uh, sorry for being a bit late uh, as as a small organization coming from the Balkans uh, to be more precise from Serbia we've been facing uh, various types of challenges uh, in in our local context uh, bearing in mind that Serbia is a country that's still not a member of the European Union we still have struggles with uh, rule of law and freedom of the media our cert is mostly oriented towards helping uh, NGOs, civil society organizations, activists, and media when it comes to cyber incidents. In that regard, international cooperation for us is of vital importance due to the fact that uh, we are the only organization in the wider region that deals with these issues. Uh, having said that, uh, becoming a part of uh, CiviCert has helped us uh, gain experience and knowledge of things that happen on a more global level since our focus is quite regional. Um, and has really contributed greatly to the work that we we do on a daily basis, not only when it comes to the technical aspects, because uh, in that regard, we do have uh, some sort of capacity to uh, basically respond to the incidents that we've been facing, but more uh, on, the, on the global trends. Uh, also, it is very important to stress out that the entire system of digital security in Serbia is still basically in the making because there is some legal framework but it has not been established to, to its full extent, meaning that we do take active part in advocacy and um, basically policy, policy, policy shaping for which international standards and experience is of um, vital, vital in, in importance to, to, to us. Um, yeah. So uh, it, it is really important for a small organization such as our own to have, to have uh, connections with, with uh, global organizations and to basically be able to contribute with our two cents and knowledge and experience from our region, which remains uncovered from others. Thanks, Adre. Uh, so, uh... Yeah, uh, I was planning to speak more about uh, the internal resource uh, that we provide for our organization's members. Uh, but uh, since we are, uh, uh, not, we are not really following our schedule and we, we are- I just, I wanna see if we have any questions from the audience, yeah. if you would type please those write. in the Q&A box. Um, otherwise, please, please keep speaking. I'll let you know if we get a question here. All right, uh, so speaking about internal resources, uh, we have, um, uh, uh, an, uh, an internal uh, reporting policy that uh, every organization should uh, follow to report uh, cases that they are working on, trends uh, and uh, 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 techniques and campaigns that are targeting civil society. In addition to that, we have uh, uh, a NISP instance where we are uh, pushing uh, indicator of compromises uh, that we see on uh, cases. So uh, if there is any uh, need for that, uh, our organization can uh, use it. And also it allows us to be uh, more uh, proactive dealing with the uh, cases. Uh, also, we are, um, uh, we are uh, developing our uh, tools and uh, internal documentations to uh, uh, respond to many uh, incidents. Uh, including uh, malware infections. And for that, we also we are hosting our uh, uh, own uh, uh, internal uh, uh, Cuckoo Sandbox. Uh, so uh, every, everyone uh, joining this uh, coalition can uh, find uh, uh, a tool that uh, uh, do for them the analysis. Uh, uh, finally, uh, uh, and this is, uh, uh, unlike the other uh, resources, it's uh, provided for the public. It's um, uh, uh, website called uh, the first ed, uh, the digital first aid kit, which is a website that allow uh, uh, visitors to uh, understand how to uh, uh, to uh, uh, deal with uh, the most common uh, threats that uh, target civil societies. And yeah, that's it. If there is any uh, questions, please go ahead. Excellent. No, I, I don't see that we have any questions, and we're we're at the end of our time, unfortunately. But I'd like to. Uh, Thank everyone on the panel. This has been a, a wonderful and very interesting talk. You all are doing some amazing work and uh, thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing that information. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thanks everybody and thank you so we'll see you at the next, next session. If you have uh, 
an email with your logins, please log out now and log into your next one. Thank you.